Hello, today we are looking at a product from Beta FPV. It's a little bit different from the norm. It's an Express LRS transmitter module, but it's a little bit different than the ones that have come before. It's basically one of the first of this new type of system called Gemini. And the idea of Gemini, as you might expect, Gemini being the twins in uh, astrology, is that it has two outputs. You'll notice this is a nano module, but what uh, Beta FPV are also doing is this little box here, which they call the micro bay to nano bay adapter. I would call it uh, nano bay to JR bay, but maybe that's something they don't want to say, which is quite handy because that covers all your different radios. Uh, USB-C at the bottom. Uh, in the box, you get a couple extra bits, like you might want to power it externally. There's this for doing something or other, I don't know yet. And we've got a USB-C to USB adapter. So before I go any further, let me tell you what Gemini does and how it differs from different ways you can use two antennas on Express LRS. Because generally speaking, I've used Express LRS in the most basic way. I'm sending on one frequency, I'm receiving on one frequency, but there are various ways of doing different things that can make your uh, signal stand up much better depending what you're doing. Let me go over it. I've had to do a bit of research here, so I have to really thank the guys on the uh, Express LRS Discord. If you've ever stuck, if you're having problems with uh, setting up or configuring part of your LRS, don't forget the Discord server. It's really good and the helpfulness there is amazing. I have to say, there's there's a lot of people there, but especially thanks to Deadbite, who seems to be there all hours to answer my silly questions. But anyway, it kind of comes down to how many attempts you've got to receive the packet. Using the most basic consideration, if we take this radio, it's got a single antenna, because it's got a, a single transmitter on ELRS. And if we have a look at a quad with a single receiver, it's got one chance of getting the packet. We send the packet, hopefully it receives the packet. If it misses the packet, the LQ drops. LQ is effectively like a percentage of how many packets are getting there. And most of the time, if you're in sort of a, a big open area, there's not much around you, you will be seeing like 100%. The times where you might get the drop, and, and I certainly notice it in the field I fly, is when you do the turn, you'll hit the null point, you'll see it drop down 90, maybe 80. So how do you improve that? Well, one of the ways, and here's a, a useful a diagram to show you is doubling up the amount of anten antennas on the receiver. And there's two ways of doing diversity. One's called antenna diversity, where there's only one active antenna. So the idea is that the receiver will switch the antenna with the greatest RSSI value and then try and take the packets from there. Uh, this can be slightly problematic because the switching may not happen accurately enough, it may miss stuff, but essentially you've got slightly more chance of getting that one packet through. And we're still talking about a single transmitter, one antenna. Then we've got something called true diversity. What this is, is your receiver has two antennas and two proper receivers built into it. It can have both antennas active at the same time, and obviously it can take the one where it gets the packet and discard ones where it, it doesn't. So you've got two chances to get the packet through, but again, you're only sending the one. And then you've got Gemini. Now Gemini has two antennas, so it sends two packets at once. And instead of sending them on a single frequency, bearing in mind one of the problems could be that RF interference takes your packet out, it sends them on two different frequencies. So you've got two antennas broadcasting at the same time on two different frequencies and two receivers uh, on your on your single uh, true diversity receiver receiving on different frequencies. So there you've got twice the ability to receive the packets. That's not quite the whole story because there was something else also involved uh, which has come out before uh, called DVDA or Deja Vu Diversity Aid. And what this is is the ability to try and multiply that single packet send and, and trying to increase stuff. And this can be done on a single antenna based um, transmitter and a single ended receiver on the other end. DVDA is basically the demos. You will see D250 and D500. What these do, they basically run at 1000 hertz, but they send multiple packets on different frequencies for the, for the same thing. So the D500 mode sends two packets instead of one and changes the frequency of them as it goes. And the D250 sends four packets for every normal packet it would send and on different frequencies as well. So you've got much more chance of getting the packet through 
if your signal's being interrupted by RF interference. Of course, it means effectively you're running at 250 hertz instead of 1000 hertz or 500 hertz instead of 1000. I guess it's more of a thing racers and people really wanting high responses would be worried with. If you're worried about losing packets and losing your LQ, then this is where this really comes into it. And interesting enough, you can combine these together. So we can have DVDA modes and use Gemini and use diversity, etc. etc. Now, test wise, I'm, I struggled with this a bit because if you've seen any of my videos and I'm testing out uh, quads or anything, you will see that I go to about one and a half kilometers and my uh, RSSI is good and my LQ is generally 100 unless we get to that turn. So it's not like I've got an environment where I can easily have, have something where I can easily see interference and see how it recovers. So my method of test may not be very good here. It certainly doesn't stand up to scientific scrutiny. Instead of having an RF interference world, what I've got here is I'm in a residential street and if I go behind a bunch of houses, I can drop my LQ way down. Now, I figured because if some of these packets can get through, then perhaps it will increase by my chance of getting packets through if I can use things like Gemini and diversity and DVDA and stuff like that. So that's my idea. However, this is built for RF interference. So my test isn't perfect. What I need is, is like a really RF noisy area to see how this would work better, but it's all I've got. So let me show you what I did. Okay, here's the receiver set. We're using a Beat FPV Super D diversity receiver. I have quickly wired this in to a Beck from an ESC and I'm just leaving it sat here on the bench. I'm gonna run this fan just to make sure everything stays cool. And I'm gonna walk outside with the radio. Okay, quick sanity test. We see our link quality is awful. Um, we've got bad RSS. This is on the RF signal critical. Uh, internal module. So it's only got one antenna sending and it's on 25 milliwatts. So this means I should hopefully RF signal critical. be able to do something to improve that. So that was using 500 hertz standard mode TX power 25 milliwatts. So let's flick over to my other model, which uses the Gemini module. Okay, and once again, we're using the 500 hertz mode. We're using antenna mode, so we're just using one antenna. I think that's the idea of that one. And as far as the module goes, we are running it in diversity instead of Gemini. So let's see how that goes with the same thing. Well, I'm in the same place down the street, and it looks better. Our link quality is better. RSS isn't as bad, so now I'm going to switch it to diversity mode. I say diversity mode, I mean antenna switch, so it should move the antennas around. So let's see what RF happens there. Critical. Yeah, it does look hugely different if I just move around slightly. It's still kind of vaguely improved depending if I just if I'm just rotating slightly you can see it go down and then jump back up again so okay so let's try Gemini okay so we've got antenna mode set to Gemini there and the receiver also set to Gemini running at 500 hertz. It's slightly bouncing about quite a bit, although it seems kind of better. If I just slightly rotate myself, see it goes up as high as 80, and then, yeah, it does, it does seem better. It sometimes drops down to sort of 50, but significantly better. But let's try one of the D modes. Let's do D250. We get four times the A chance of getting the packets through. Okay, so we're still in Gemini mode on both antenna and receiver, but now we're on D250. It's still jumping around an awful lot. If I just move a couple of steps, the link quality goes back up to 100, which is a bit spooky. It's just the fact I'm just here and it just catches an extra bit so we can make it go signal low. worse. Is it better overall? Ooh, it seems to be getting jumping around I mean the the RSS the DBM values for the two antennas are pretty much the same 
but the, the link quality is changing. Now, I guess one of the problems there with that testing, and apologies for the sound I was doing on my phone, it was slightly raining outside and it was a bit noisy inside with the fan running, but it was just a general test to see what the differences were. And although uh, the test environment didn't seem very good in the terms that the LQ would sort of flicker up and down a bit, we got a general, the single antenna on the internal module was worse, and it seemed like running D250 in Gemini got the best if you sort of take into account the weird flickers. The weird outlier effect we got there is when I ran this in just one uh, antenna for transmitting, we seem to get like a high high value there. But it's a, a very strange situation where all it, all it is is a slight rotation can completely change the signal strength, which is kind of annoying. But it, it's not particularly conclusive. I think we had like a sort of worse going to best, or although kind of ambles a bit in between. Probably the best video to watch to explain this better is from Jai Smith, who was the developer who put Gemini into it in the first place. He did a video where he was actually flying stuff in a race environment with lots of RF noise. Uh, I'll put a link down below and you can sort of see the differences that went on there with his link quality. I think that's a better test. Of course, there's, there's lots to be done to make things better, even on a test like that. This was just lying down. Uh, of course, if you were on like a quad, you, you might want these to have different polarization. So that's upwards, that's like vertical, horizontal, and then you don't sort of cut off on the polarity or up on a V or something better than just stuffed on a desk, basically. So there's that to do. There's also placement of these antennas as well to, to get the, the best from them and experiment this with them. So there's certainly more experimentation for me to be doing with them. The, the question is how am I gonna get past the fact that when I fly it as far as I can, I'm always on 100 LQ anyway, perhaps see what happens in the turn on Gemini, see if I can get like a hundred all the way through the turn instead of having null points hit. That'd be interesting. This is about this little module. This is called the Super G Nanotransmitter uh, from B FPV. It can still go up to one watt, uh, which generally, as far as ELRS goes, will get you an awful long way. It's got two physical buttons here that do things like increasing and decreasing the power. I didn't really touch them because it's not something um, I generally do dynamically. I sort of see how it goes and, and then do it. And of course you've got the option of, of running in Gemini mode as well as switch mode and single antenna. And hand in hand with their true diversity antenna, you could do a lot with it. So in terms of the use cases, stuff like FPV race events, where you may have a lot of people on 2.4 putting a lot of noise out might be very useful. Uh, long range stuff, if you've got, I don't know if you've, you've done it before but sometimes you go through a point of view where the signal drops and then recovers and you know you just get interference in certain areas and that might be a case of like the alternative uh, frequency might solve that issue and you might be able to go further with you know a higher LQ. So I'll have links down below for these ones. I said I'll be testing it again with uh, something like a quad if I can weather dependent, time dependent, just to see what, you know, what improvement I can get. But anyway, that is the review and kind of test for today. Not a perfect test, as I said, but I think there's a general improvement as we go through the various modes of doing things. And it was interesting to me to learn about these different modes, because I literally just said single antenna, single transmitter, put it in 250 hertz or whatever and, and fly. There are different ways to do it, and some of them are quite impressive. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful, and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.